Okay, <laughs> question number seven from um, October 2016, M1, Canis 1, speed time graphs. It says that a train moves on a straight horizontal track between two stations A and B. The train starts from rest at A and moves with constant acceleration 1 meters per second squared until it reaches a speed of V meters per second. The train maintains this speed of V meters per second for the next T seconds before slowing down with constant deceleration at 0 0.5 meters per second squared coming to rest at B. The journey from A to B takes 180 seconds and the distance between the stations is 4,800 meters. Sketch a speed time graph for the motion of the train from A to B. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so get speed against time. Alright, so it tells us that it starts off uh, at rest. Okay, and moves with constant acceleration, one meters per second squared, until it reaches the speed of V meters per second. Okay, so let's just show that. It starts at rest, it starts from zero. And the speed is one meters per second, so the gradient here is one. Okay. It reaches a speed of V meters per second and it maintains that speed for the next T seconds. So that's T seconds. Before slowing down with constant deceleration, 0 0.5 meters per second squared, coming to the rest of the piece. So it's going to be like, it's going to be like a shallow gradient there. Yeah? It's going to be like gradient. Okay. So it's just a sketch, it's not accurate. Okay, so there we have the start of the journey at A and the end of the journey at B. Okay, so this is 0 and this is 180. This is the time in seconds and this is the speed in meters per second. And it reaches a speed of V. Which is with a B meters per second. Okay, and it does that in well, I don't know how many seconds. Then it goes for T seconds at constant speed until it reaches uh, zero at one eighty. So this is like a X seconds, we don't know. And this is t seconds after x, so that's x plus t seconds, and that's 180 seconds, and that's v meters per second. Okay, we know the gradient of this is 1. Okay, so in terms of v, this would be equal to v. This would be v plus t. Okay, in terms of v, because the gradient is 1, so you know, v over x equals 1. Okay, um, alright, so now. That's part A done. That's fine. Now part B. Okay, so part B says show that T equals 180 mi uh, minus 3V. Okay, so that means we want to have the time in terms, the time in terms of V. Okay, and we just mentioned here that this must be V. And I'll show you why, because the gradient of this is V. We could say that, you know, um, V equals U plus AT, all right? And we can say that, uh, you know, the final velocity is, is V, the initial velocity is zero, A is one, okay? So you'll have V equals zero plus one times T, so T is equal to V, think of it like that if you want. So we know that that, and that must be V here, in terms of V, because the time is in terms of V. And so this must be V plus T, Okay, because from there to there it's going at a constant speed for t seconds. And then um, this, in terms of v, this 180, 
Okay, in terms of V, this one eighty must be basically think about in the same format as this. I, I know it's there's going to be two V because the acceleration is a half, so it's going to take twice as long. But in case just you want to you want to use V equals U plus eighty again, you can do that. Okay, I want to find the time it takes to come to rest this time. The initial velocity is P, and the acceleration is negative 0.5. Okay, so if you think about this now, you're going to have 0.5 T equals V. So T is equal to V divided by 0.5, which is 2 V. So this is going to be um, altogether 3 V plus T. See, and we can see that uh, 3 V plus T, right? So we can see that 3V plus T is the same as 180. 3V right? plus T is 180 seconds. 3V plus T is 180 seconds, and we want to find that and make T the subject. That's 180 take away 3V. So there we have it. That's part B. And part C tells us to find the value of V. Well, how can we do that? Well, look at the information given in the question. There's one piece of information that's given that we haven't used so far, and that's that the distance between the stations is 4,800 meters. That means the area under this trapezium is 4,800. Okay? The distance travel is 4,800, so the area under the trapezium is 4,800. So if we think about the area under the trapezium, we have the distance between those parallel sides, okay, which is this V, divided by 2, it's half the distance between the parallel sides times the sum of the parallel sides. Well, the distance between here and here is t, because that's so it went it went t seconds constant speed, and the distance between there and there is 180. Okay, 180 as we as we're told from the beginning. So we got the sum of the parallel sides is t plus 180, and we know that um, the sum of the parallel sides. I'm sorry, the, the area is equal to 4,800. Okay. So we can use this to find the value of V. How? Because we know that T is equal to 180 minus 3V. So we can write this T in terms of V. So let's first expand this. Um, well, no, let's first let's, let's do that. We've got T is 180 minus 3V. So you got, instead of T, I'm going to write 180 minus 3v plus 180 equals 4800 okay so multiplying by 2 you'll have v times 360 minus 3v equals 9600 so i just added these 180s together and at the same time I multiply both sides by 2 so you have 360 times v minus 3v squared equals 9600. So you end up with minus 3v squared plus 360v minus 9600 equals 0. If I divide by minus 3 to get rid of the minus v squared, see we've got a quadratic equation. Divided by minus 3, you get v squared plus. That's going to be 120v minus, that's going to be 3200. Okay, so we have a quadratic equation which we can solve most probably by factorizing. We can see that 4 times, they have to have different signs. Uh, sorry, they have to have the same sign. So I had to bring that to the side, yeah. That should be, uh, should be negative here. Careful, okay, see that's a negative there, and then we divide by minus it becomes positive. So I have to have the same sign, okay? Um, that becomes that becomes negative. See? Sorry about that. We divide by minus three, so that became minus three v squared. Uh, that, that minus three v squared became v squared. That plus three sixty v became minus one twenty v, and that minus nine thousand six hundred became positive three thousand two hundred. We have to change the sign and divide by 3. So here we've got two brackets with V in them. They have to have the same sign, both have to be negative. And we can see that 40 times 80. 40 and 80 will give you um, 3,200, 4 raised to 32. And when you add them, you get minus. So it's going to be 40 and 80.
if you're not sure how to do that so you've got v equals 40 and v equals 80 we haven't quite finished yet but if you're not sure how to do that i will show you that like for example sometimes you you get stuck and your brain freezes and you don't know how to deal with these type of questions okay let me just go back to the original you don't know how to deal with such questions okay like when you get to this stage you reckon your brains out in the exam you know you want you have you don't have much time left and you can't think about how to factorize this and there's no problem with just going to your calculator going to the equation which is nine in this particular one then you've got simultaneous and polynomial we've got polynomial equation of order two because it's quadratic it's two when you put the values of a b and c so here a is one of course of course and b is negative 120 plus equals and c is 3200 plus equals all right then it will give you your solutions 80 and 40. so you can if you wish to, to show that you I mean, there, there will be no problem if you wrote the answer straight from here to there as long as you didn't make a mistake okay as long as you didn't make a mistake and if you made a mistake then they'll look to see how you tried to solve it did you try to factorize did you use the formula they'll look for evidence of that if you got the answer correct then they will give you the marks for it if you didn't get the answer correct they will give you a mark for the method of solving it so it'll be a good idea for you for example would be to write the quadratic formula if you weren't sure how to do this okay and you'd get that mark but anyway now they're both positive you're saying to yourself which one must be the answer but let's look at the context of the question again we know from the question right there's something here that's going to help us t equals 180 minus 3v now just imagine if v equals 80 t is equal to 180 minus 3 times 80 which is negative 80 minus 240 which is negative 60 seconds that doesn't make sense you can't have a negative time t cannot equal negative 60 therefore v cannot equal 80 so v must be 40 if you put 40 in here you're going to have 180 minus 120 which is 60 so v must be 40 okay so we're rejecting v equals 80 and we're accepting v equals 40 and there we have the answer to this question